Thank you. As a teacher for over 15 years, teaching grades 8 through 12, I have seen students go from the brink of dropping out and quitting to not only staying in school, finishing high school with a diploma and receiving a scholarship, all because they see themselves in the curriculum. When you feel valued as a human being, you will succeed, and all of our children deserve that. everything we were all already working in this 15 years 20 years as teachers as parents as educators in the community um, and what led up to Arizona what were our, the Texas reactions to Arizona what brings us here and how do we feel about um, a very historic opportunity to speak at the State Board of Education. Okay. Uh, my name is Emily Rodriguez. I'm from the University of Houston. I'm a bilingual education major and I'm here to speak in favor of Mexican American studies in public high schools in Texas. We right to, uh, to incorporate that curriculum because to take, that, to take all the information away from us is another way to oppress us, is another way to not acknowledge our existence in Texas. Mexican Americans and Chicanos were fighting for uh, basic civil rights that are protected by the U.S. Constitution. And as Americans, we have the right to use those rights in our favor for equality, for inclusion in, the, in, in, this, in society, and for acceptance, not only because we're here and we should be heard, but because we are American and because we do fall under the protection of the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Bill of Rights. en este país y aquí en la Universidad de Houston estoy tomando estudios mexicoamericanos me estoy graduando en, en um, estudios mexicoamericanos y quiero que mis hijos estudien lo que ellos quieran estudiar pero que tengan su base estudiar estudios mexicoamericanos para que sepan su origen y puedan saber a dónde van a ir vamos a hacer la mayoría muy pronto aquí en este país pero si no uh, nos educamos vamos a tener otra gente que nos van a hacer nuestros líderes y eso es lo que no quiero para mis hijos. Quiero que ellos sepan de dónde vienen para que sepan a dónde van. Uh, this, is, this is needed because um, you know we have a Eurocentric um, style of teaching. That's um, it's kind of like there's still it's still Indian boarding schools really. It's uh, forced assimilation. You know really is what these, these schools are. They're not letting our children know who they are. They're not. They don't. They don't feel proud of who they are when they leave these. When they, leave these uh, when they leave these classes. So, it's important that we uh, we educate our own children, ultimately. But to start off with, we need to have something where our educated our children are educated about who they know who they are. A knowledge, gain a knowledge of self. Anything you know closer than what it is right now. So. When I was at Saint Edward's University student here in 1979, I did an anthropological study with. Uh, el señor José Treviño, and it turns out I discovered that the projects that I grew up in were the first projects built in the USA, and that the first residents, these are Chalmers projects here in Austin, were Americanos. <laughs>
Um, hello, I'm, I'm Dagoberto Gill. Um, I guess about me, I'm, I'm a professor at the University of Houston, Victoria, where I'm uh, the director of, executive director of Centro Victoria, which is a, a cultural center. I'm also the writer in residence there, where um, uh, my, my background as a writer is uh, I published, uh, I don't know, seven or eight books now, but I published in magazines such as The New Yorker, Harper's, The New York Times, um, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, every major magazine you know of I published in, including our local magazine, Texas Monthly. I'm Morris Belt. I go by Skip. And I have to uh, lean on my memory in high school back in the 50s, and I can remember very little said about Mexican Americans. In fact, uh, what was said was usually negative. It was not until I went to the University of Texas and in the Institute of Latin American Studies that uh, my eyes were opened quite a bit. And I got a much broader uh, and taller view of Mexican Americans and Latinos generally. Uh, I'm a historian, social activist. Uh, I'm also the chairman of the board of the Texas Slave Descendant Society. I came to tell you guys some light, you know, some history that's not being told. That Santa Ana actually was a freedom fighter because you, uh, because Mexico was uh, when they raised the arrangement with Stephen F. Austin, they told him that you cannot have slaves come through here. Uh, when they made that agreement to lease this land out to them. But they brought the slaves anyhow, and they told them that after f after ones who were born here had to be born free, the other ones in five years had to be uh, had to had to be free after five years. They broke all those arrangements because uh, Mexico was just coming out of war with Spain, and their first president happened to be black in 1812, and they did not believe in slavery. Actually, the Underground Railroad ran to Mexico they were abolitionists for the blacks because they didn't go up north. And so uh, when, Stephen F., when Stephen F. Austin broke those arrangements and those agreements, uh, the Texans were upset because they were not able to retrieve their property. Once they property flee, and, and, and needs to be acknowledged that Santa Ana and the Mexicans were abolitionists for the blacks during that period. And it used to be put into the book, rewritten, and acknowledged so that we can have harmony and unity. Today I'm here to speak to you about the absolute necessity of implementation on indigenous Me Mexican American studies. Texas is the state with the fastest growing public education enrollment. 52% of over 5 million Texas students are indigenous Mexican American and that number comes from the TEA enrollment data that you just released on April 1st. And in all of our greatness, Texas continues to lead the nation in high school dropouts. If you'll look on page two, there's a chart with some purple coloring. And you can see that 13 of our 20 ESC regions are predominantly indigenous Mexican American students. Several of them over 50%, several over 60, several over 80, several over 90%. And all of you sit in these regions. All of you, each of your decisions affect all of these students. We need to prepare college dorm rooms based on second grade enrollment data and put an end to being labeled number one in high school dropouts. Together, we can create a prosperous economy and provide for all of our joint futures. We can be the change we need to see. 12 years of research, analysis, state audits, all prove that indigenous Mexican American students are highly engaged in learning. Our communities and families are active participants in schools. We increase attendance and test scores. We graduate more students on time. We enroll more students in colleges and universities with scholarships. All of this occurs when we facilitate learning with culturally and historically relevant materials, and that is indigenous Mexican American studies. That is not achievable with watered down multicultural proposals. When implemented at the pre-K level and continuing through graduation, we see rooms filled with students who once felt invisible, now feeling valued as human beings. And because we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act, I have a statement, a very simple statement. As a Please teacher, finish your statement. Yes. Thank you. As a teacher for over 15 years, teaching 
grades 8 through 12, I have seen students go from the brink of dropping out and quitting to not only staying in school, finishing high school with a diploma and receiving a scholarship, all because they see themselves in the curriculum. When you feel valued as a human being, you will succeed, and all of our children deserve that. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Tony Diaz. I'm also known as the Libra Traficante. Let me clarify, I'm gonna give up five seconds to clarify the findings of my colleague. Long story short, the findings you have before you indicate that because of gerrymandering, there are Republicans who serve predominantly Latino areas. And we'll find out tomorrow if these are conservative Republicans or far-right Republicans. And I think that's really what's at stake. I'd love to talk more about that in a little bit if we can. But let me bring you back to my issues. And here's what we're talking about. At the end of the day, we have inundated you with facts. And I can give you more facts. I want to give you the big picture right now. The whole world is watching, and the whole world has changed. I'm going to give you two quick examples of the extent of that. The people in this room represent every level of professional, and we represent every level of media, from mainstream to social media to talking to our tias and tios in the community. This has never happened before in the state, and it will never go back to the way it was. I mention that because Texas is behind. You can help Texas catch up by tomorrow voting to implement Mexican-American studies. One quick example, the gentleman who started off this discussion Dagoberto Gill is an author banned in Arizona. I hope we can free him in Texas, and I hope tomorrow you will vote to implement Mexican American Studies, because we need to show the world, and we're gonna report this right now. When I'm done reporting it, we're gonna show the world that Texas can get it right. So this is the question. Who will walk with us into this new America, and who will turn their back on us? Because really, there really is no logical reason to not support and not implement Mexican American Studies, there's only one logical conclusion left. I would love it if tomorrow we mark the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act, which was signed by the brilliant Texan LBJ and was meant to squash the type of discrimination that we're talking about. That led to redistricting, which we're talking about. That led to protected classes, which we're talking about. Latinos are not defined. Mexican Americans are the only protected class, which is actually why myself too, my parents are migrant workers. I'm the first to go to college. It wasn't until I started reading books by other Latinos that I realized it was vital to go to college. And now I have a master's degree. In one generation, my family's gone from the farm fields where I am honored to represent my culture on a national stage. And these, these are individuals then that will function, that will go out there, that will become great leaders, doctors for everybody. And there's many, I think a lot of the students who are here with us, we've got students from the Rio Grande Valley, San Antonio, Houston, of course in Austin. These students too are community leaders and it's so important to them as well that they're here on their time and on their dime to let it be known that they need mixed market studies as well. So okay, any this. other any other questions? Thank you. Mr. Mercer? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Mercer. It's good to see you again. Just a couple of questions. What were the reasons the Arizona gave? Yes, well, if you look at Arizona House Bill 2281, 2281, which it's Arizona House Bill 2281, which I will point out, students of Arizona have taken to the Ninth District Court of Appeals this fall. And because it's still America, I have no doubt that it will be overturned and not be seen by the Supreme Court. But um, the four reasons they gave, I'll, I'll elucidate on the first one. Arizona far-right Republicans believe that Mexican American Studies promotes the overthrow of the government. Another one, another reason they thought was that it is uh, it is uh, unique to just one group and caters to just one group. But what I say to that is, I know I look British, <laughs> but I'm not. However, I enjoyed British literature. Likewise, you don't have to be Mexican to take Mexican American literature. At the same time, you learn these critical thinking skills that really inspire students. These are just two of the different reasons. And actually, the reason I just gave, I believe, was the one that was too vague. Arizona Supreme Court actually um, upheld the law, but they said one of the, one of the aspects was too vague was that vague. Mr. Mercer, yeah, do you have another question? Uh, the question you referenced about Mexican-American studies, I can tell you, two of my favorite U.S. senators, one is here next week, are Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. Would they be included in that class? Well. 
again, if you took mixed market studies, you'd know the answer to that. So I, I'd love to elucidate on you. Uh, they are actually Latinos.